Welcome, Android developers, to Firebase. My name is Doug Stevenson, and after following this Firecast, you should be able to connect your Android app to Firebase. It takes just a few minutes, and then you can start developing with Firebase components in your app. We'll do three things to help you get set up. First, I'll show you how to check your tools and make sure you have the correct version of everything. Then, I'll walk you through the creation of your project using the Firebase console. And finally, I'll show the changes that you need to make to your Android app to prepare it for development with Firebase. OK, first things first. Before starting with Firebase on Android, you should check to make sure you have everything you need. To run your app, you'll need an Android device or emulator with at least API level 9, which is Android 2.3, also known as Gingerbread, and that must have Play Services 9.0 or later. Physical devices should already have this update by now. But if you're using an emulator, you should get the latest update for your emulator image and make sure you're using one marked with Google APIs. This means it has Play Services installed. To check the version of Play Services on a device, launch the Settings app and select Apps. Make sure you're looking at a list of all the installed apps and scroll down to Google Play Services. Select that and check that the version is greater than 9.0. Now that you've verified you have a device that can run Firebase, it's time to check your Android SDK tools. Launch Android Studio, run the Android SDK Manager from the toolbar, and click the SDK Tools tab. There, you should have Google Play Services Revision 30 or newer, and Google Repository Revision 26 or newer. If you have these installed, you can start building with Firebase client libraries, and always remember to keep them up to date. Now that you have a device and tools to start building, we can start setting up Firebase to use in your app. First, I'll navigate to firebase.google.com. This is the home of everything Firebase. To get to the console, I'll click the console link at the top right. Now I'll click the enticing blue button in the middle of the screen, which pops up a dialog to create a new project. Every project needs a name. Clicking in the project name text box suggests that I should only create a single project if my app is cross-platform. But we're only going to do Android in this video. If you later create an iOS version of your app, you should reuse the same project if you want to share data and configuration between them. I'll also take the default location of United States, since I'd like to measure in any currency values for the purpose of analytics in US dollars. Now I'll commit the new project with this other attractive blue button. After a few moments, my project is created, and I'm taken to the dashboard, which shows an overview page of everything I can do in the console. On the left side, you can see the various Firebase components, but let's not worry about those right now. Instead, click the big button in the middle with the Android logo on it to get your app connected to this project. To complete the connection, you'll need two pieces of information. First, there's the unique package name that you used when you created it. This is typically defined in your app's configuration in the build.gradle as application ID. I have a basic project already created in Android Studio, so I'll just copy its ID from build.gradle into the dialog at the console. The second thing you should provide is the SHA-1 hash of your debug key. This is only required if you're going to develop with remote config, authentication, or app invites, but let's go ahead and do it now. The SHA-1 hash helps Firebase verify that your debug app has permission to use these Firebase services. So to get your SHA-1 hash, open up a terminal window and type this command. It will prompt you for a password, so type the default password for the debug key store, which is the word Android in all lowercase. What this does is print some information about your debug key store. The specific thing you're looking for is the line that starts with SHA-1. So you'll want to copy the series of hex values after that, and then paste that string into the text box in the console. Now that you've got these two values entered into the dialog, you'll want to go ahead and click the Add App button. This will start a download of a file called googleservices.json that contains your app configuration. Remember that when your Firebase configuration changes later, you may need to download an updated JSON config to add to your project. What you'll need to do with this file is move it into your Android project under the app directory. I'm going to do this on the command line. Now I can see it in the correct place in my project. Once that's done, I can update my Gradle build files to add Firebase client libraries to my app. The first thing I'm going to do is add the Google Services Gradle plugin to my build script configuration. By default, this is in the top level build.gradle file. What I need to do here is add a line to the dependencies block to let Gradle know how to find a plugin that I'm going to add later. Because I modified this file, Android Studio is asking me to sync my project, but I'm going to ignore that for now. OK, close that file. Now I'm going to open up my app level build.gradle file and apply the Google Services plugin at the very bottom of this file. This plugin will read the Google Services.json file and inject some of its values into your build. 
The last change I'll make here is adding a compile dependency on Firebase Core. The plugin will actually do this for me, but I want to make sure I'm using the latest version. You should check the documentation to make sure you're using the latest and greatest. So I'm going to check here on the Firebase Android setup docs. So here we can see that the latest at this moment is 9.0.2. And that's what I'm going to use for Firebase Core. Alrighty, we're done now with the Gradle modifications. So I'll go ahead and tell Android Studio to sync the modifications into the project. Now, to make sure everything is working as expected, I'll launch this app in an emulator and check the log output to see if Firebase initialized correctly. And we see here that Firebase initialized just before the log message in my application object. So that's all there is to it. Now, you're ready to move on to integrating the components of Firebase that you want to use in your Android app. Check out the Firebase documentation right here for more details on those components. And that's it for this Firecast. Please leave your questions in the comments below or message me directly at CodingDoug on Twitter. There will be more Firecasts published over time, so be sure to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel right here.